I do like that what we were talking about right before this really was a they did what? <laughs> yes, I know, right? Not that we'll tell anyone what we were talking about. No, no, no. not at all. No. But it did raise the question of they did what? Hmm. Well, uh, I'm Rhiannon. And I'm Mitch. <laughs> and Mitch is bringing us a story today. What is the story, Mitch? Oh, I want to talk about something that happened in the 1300s. It is the ransom of Lord Douglas. Okay. And it is quite possibly the greatest bluff in medieval history. Hmm. Okay. Um, to put it in perspective, though, you do need to know that it's happening in the Hundred Year War. Mm -hmm. It involves the French, the Scots, and the English. I'm sure we can all agree which side of the war the Scots are on at that point in human history. <laughs> <laughs> You might have to remind the listeners. <laughs> well, it's the same side that the Scottish are still on, which is anyone against the English. Yes. <laughs> um, but it is uh, based on the Battle of uh, Poitiers mm -hmm. in the Hundred Year War. It's 1356, and it's when the English show up and are like, Haha, we have longbows again. Have you learnt your lesson, Frenchmen? And the French are like, no. <laughs> <laughs> We shall not learn this lesson ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just want to put in perspective the actual fight that is about to happen before the story that is so strange about Lord Douglas. Mm -hmm. So Poitiers, there's 6,000 English, Gascon, and Breton. Oh, the Gascon. Yeah. <laughs> I know those from a very famous play. <laughs> um, and yeah, so they're slightly more famous than the Breton. And the Breton is not just me saying British with a French mm. accent. It's actually a group of people in northern France from the Duchy of Brittany. Yes. So they're just on that very top edge that's sort of hanging out, if you think of the image of France. Mm. Um, against them are 11,000 French, German, and Scottish men-at-arms, nobles, knights, and a foot infantry army a day away, numbering 20,000. So the British seem outnumbered. Ever so slightly, yes. Sorry, I said the British. The English. <laughs> the British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the English army under the Black Prince, very much outnumbered. Yeah. In the same way that, you know, Australian soldiers were outnumbered by emus in the emu <laughs> war. <laughs> this will go better than that. That's good. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so it's the King of France leading the French detachments, but in that is a large number of Scots. They had, a couple years earlier, been ransomed back to their Scottish fiefs for waging war against the English, mm -hmm. and had gotten dispensation to leave the English Isles and go looking for things to do everywhere else. They get to France... And they're like, ha ha, well, it's not our fault if the English come here and we just happen to be helping the French on a war footing. <laughs> <laughs> the rationale they actually give is um, that they became chevaliers amongst the French knights so that they would not leave their harnesses to rust. So the idea being like, I'm not putting my armor away because when I need it, I won't be good in it anymore. Mm. So I'll just fight alongside the French. And I'll make sure I only stab people who aren't explicitly English. Okay. <clears throat> and then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, leading the Scottish forces are two Douglases. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give their full titles by the end of their life. But they both would have had different sort of titles throughout their lifetimes. So, <clears throat> leading the Scottish is William Douglas, first Earl of Douglas... Earl of Mar and Lord of Lidsdale. First Earl, though. So mm -hmm. his lineage starts with him. Okay. His cousin, who we're going to be talking about, Lord Douglas, mm -hmm. is called Archibald. He's Archibald Douglas, the third Earl of Douglas, so will eventually ascend the throne that his cousin currently has. Okay. He's also the, the Earl of Wigton. Lord, Lord of Galway, Douglas, Bothwell, and is eventually called Archibald the Grim, mm -hmm. or Black Archibald. Okay. There's a lot of people so. with the name Black 
mm. in this fight or who eventually earn it. Right, because it's, it's the Black Prince as well. Yes, yes. On the other side of the yes. battle. Yeah. Um, so... The really big problem here is it's most likely the Douglases who lose the battle for the French. Okay. Because they're like, hey, English longbows, kind of deadly. Maybe we should take half to three quarters of our knights off horseback so we're not losing as many horses and march into the fight. Right. This is most likely what lost the French the battle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. By the end of the fight, there are 2,500 French, Scottish, and German dead. Mm -hmm. 1,900 are taken captive for ransom. There's only 600 who fought the, against them. There's 6,000. 6,000 6, English okay. versus 11,000 yes, French yeah, and allies. Okay. But there's still 2,500 dead. Mm -hmm. 1,900 captured for ransom, and 340 English die. Right. Across the whole battle. Okay, that was probably very <laughs> unexpected for everyone in that fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> to explain why, I mean, there's the field that they're in, the French have to come at the English. The English have better position. They've put their longbowmen behind really thick hedges that they know that the French cavalry are not going to ride through. Mm -hmm. And even when the French cavalry looks like it's doing okay, the longbowmen just go, oh, hey, let's go back into the woods, run around a little bit, mm -hmm. and shoot them in the back. <laughs> and they do. Okay. <laughs> so the French cavalry that could have tipped the battle, the English longbowmen are like, right here, let's, let's go over there. <laughs> See if we can't shoot them in the ass." <laughs> um, to put it in perspective, though, the speed at which longbowmen at this point who are well trained who are veterans of a couple of other battles against the french at this point are able to fire arrows that rate of fire won't be surpassed until world war one wow they're firing faster and more projectiles and more missiles onto a battlefield than you get until you get repeating rifles in world war one until you get professional sort of understanding how to use your mm. gun rather than just being militia or being pressed into service kind of soldiers. This is the longbowman. This is the longbowman. Which, I feel like we should explain the longbow to the listeners. <laughs> yeah. If you've never seen one, they're usually between 5 foot 8 and 6 foot 4 mm. tall. This is a bow that is bigger than the person pulling it. <clears throat> and the poundage... Because this is what you refer to it as um, how difficult it is to draw the string. It's the poundage um, mm. of the string and how much it's going to fling that arrow forward. The consensus is that the English longbow usually drew somewhere between 80 and 120 pounds mm -hmm. of pull. Right. Now, I, when I do archery, use a very high weight horsebow. I don't like modern bows. I find they're a bit unfair and cheating because it's got pulleys and stuff and it doesn't feel like you're actually doing any effort. My high power horse bow that is the maximum poundage they will let me shoot with mm -hmm. at the range only runs to 55 pounds. Wow. And it is difficult for a lot of the people that I shoot with to draw more than two arrows on it. Mm -hmm. These are longbowmen firing on a 80 to 120 pound bow, 10 to 30 arrows in the space of three, four hours. Mm. And you can, today, when they find the bodies of longbowmen, oh, they can gosh. see that that's what they do because <clears throat> of the changes to their skeletal structure around that right yeah, shoulder. The muscles start doing weird things to the bone mm. and in the shoulder and everything and Oh, it just... Yeah, it's insane when you see... You can look it up. You can look up videos mm. of, you know, archaeologists looking at these bodies. Yeah. And they just... Yeah. Yeah. The, just the concept of pulling a longbow as an individual and then having a good thousand, two thousand, three thousand of them and just being like, mm. go. 
it makes it, it really starts to make sense that the French cavalry just drops mm. as these arrows are usually hitting horses. Mm. And, and then that's they're getting crushed into their horses, yeah. are getting stuck. Yeah, or they get stuck in the mud because mm. the horses are churning up the ground. Yeah. This is the situation that the Douglases find themselves in. Yeah. And Archie, our Lord Douglas that we're focusing on, he gets captured. One of the other people he is captured with is a Scottish knight, Sir William Ramsay of Caluthi, I think it's pronounced. Um... And Sir William Ramsay is not really the same level of nobility as Archibald Douglas mm -hmm. is. He's a little bit more like just a chevalier, just a knight. He's fighting with the Scottish forces there. But he knows that it is going to bankrupt Scotland <laughs> if they find out that the second most highly ranked Scotsman has been taken hostage. Yeah. This is a time period where I think the last time they ransomed someone important back, they asked for a hundred thousand gold ducats, wow. or the equivalent of. And I mean, in modern money, that's hundreds of millions of dollars in purchasing power for one person. Also, I really wish we still used the word ducat. Ducats are just fun. Oh, just such a good word. <laughs> Just get to the cashier at McDonald's. And that's a half ducket for the Happy Meal and the Big Mac today. You just know in Australia too, everyone start like calling, oh, how many buckets you got? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Bring back the ducket. <laughs> oh. All right. So, the, yeah, so Archie gets caught, Ramsey gets caught, and they're put into roughly the same area. Um, the English are like, haha, this is great. We have someone extremely important because Archibald's armor is amazing. Okay. It is high quality. It is well enameled. His gear is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He is wearing the equivalent of a Lamborghini <laughs> for his armor. And they bring him in and in front of all the English guards that are like holding them, waiting to figure out Ransom... Ramsey loses his shit. <laughs> Starts yelling and screaming at Archibald. And starts accusing him of stealing the armor he's wearing from Ramsey's cousin. Ooh, that's a ploy. <laughs> and Ramsey's like, how dare you? You've stolen the, my cousin's armor. You're the reason he's dead. You're the <laughs> reason that English Arrow was able to punch through the armor he was able to scavenge together to be able to ride into battle today. You... Ah! And he's just like yelling into like... He starts like physically going at Archibald and the English guards have to pull them apart. And they're like, no, no. He's not just some dude. Look at the armor. And he's like, yeah, because he stole it. <laughs> he's wearing stolen stuff. He starts calling him a servant and a slave and a cur and a coward. And Archibald just takes it. Yeah. And apparently is just completely confused as to what's going on. <laughs> and Ramsey just ratchets it up another level. He's like, fine, fine. You there. And points at Archie. He's like, come over and take my boots off. That is the proper place for a servant like you. Archibald outranks Ramsay by a number of levels of society. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, take my boots off, big boy. <laughs> Wonder if he was just waiting for this opportunity his whole life and he was like, yes! <laughs> I get to do the right thing and the fun thing. <laughs> uh, so, Ramsay sits down. Archibald comes over, gets on his knees, and starts unlacing both the um, the metallic parts of the lower parts of his boots and the actual boot underneath. Mm -hmm. He takes off the first boot, puts it down, and as he reaches down to start taking off the other boot, Ramsay grabs the boot and starts beating Archibald around the head with it. <laughs> He's like, you stupid servant! You've killed my cousin! How dare you! Why would you do this? <laughs> And this, oh, and I had to get it down because the actual quote that's written down by the chroniclers at the time is hilarious. They're like, look, uh, the, the English guards are like, Archibald has to be the son of a great noble. He should be respected. And Ramsay's retort is, not he. He is a scullion and a rogue. 
Go, you rascal, seek your master's body amongst the slain so that we may at least give him a decent burial. <laughs> and just, like, starts pushing him out the doors. And they're like, what? 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 No, you guys are prison. Oh, okay, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually they're like, look, he was a servant, which, uh, but he was wearing armor, so we have to rank him as, like, um, an esquire. Mm. So really low rank. And so his ransom is paid after being set at 40 shillings. <laughs> Reminder, what was the original amount? The original amount for people of his rank that we've seen mm. done in the same sort of theatre of war has ranged up to 100,000 ducats. Now, a ducat has hundreds and hundreds of pounds mm. in it. 40 shillings is two pounds. It is the year's <laughs> wage of a skilled labourer. Right. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah. In modern currency, it's not even 1,200 British pounds now. Okay. He's the second highest ranking Scot. Mm. He's already broken parole by coming and fighting with the French against the English. <laughs> and Ramsay's just like, dude, dude, go, I got this covered. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> and sends him home with, like, the lowest possible fine. <laughs> <laughs> that he can probably pay out of his coin purse. Yeah. Like the hundred thousand that was charged by the English to the French, um, they had to pay it back in 20,000 increments, ducat increments mm. from the actual royal treasury as well as this guy's estates. Mm. And it was taking, they never paid it all back because people die. Oh. <laughs> But it took them a year for the King of France and one of his highest ranking nobles to scrape together 20,000 ducats. So getting away on a 40 shilling, <laughs> like, demand? Oh, just perfect. Actually, I'm pretty sure Ramsay is the one who pays it too. Because mm. he's like, it's one of my servants, here's the money. Send him to look for my cousin. <laughs> God, I really wish we had, like, the story of what happened between the two of them after that. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, we don't really hear about Ramsay ever again. <laughs> like, he's just, he's there, he's important there. This is also the first time we see chronicled, like, records of Archibald. Okay. He's just not important enough until this moment. When he single-handedly, probably by not being ransomed as himself, saves the economy of Scotland. <laughs> oh. Like, that would have been the equivalent of, like, the ruling class of Scotland and the nobles would have had to band it together and been destitute for mm -hmm. about a decade to pay back what it would have cost to get him out if they had have known who he was. Yeah. He ends up being uh, the sheriff of... A um, uh, number of castles across Scotland. Like, he ends up being extraordinarily wealthy yeah. for a Scottish noble. But that's why it's so, so <laughs> helpful. <laughs> it's like, 40 shillings, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it should be, 40 shillings, I can do that. <laughs> I was waiting, I was like, there hasn't been a Scottish accent yet. <laughs> Here we go. I've just opened the racist door ever so slightly and now I'll close it again. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that is that is the big story about the ransom of Lord Douglas. Because mm. it's the biggest blunder the English make that day, and it's really the only blunder they make. Mm. Douglas gets away, they have the King of France. And they practically are like, we'll take three quarters of France mm. as ransom for the king. It takes a couple of years and the intercession of the Pope. <laughs> to get them to like narrow down what the actual ransom is yeah and it is what sort of cripples france's ability to continue prosecuting the hundred years war mm. for a number of years after that because they really are just broke and they've lost a huge amount of land yeah. to this sort of defeat at poitiers hmm. and scott's got off scott free that's the end of the episode and we'll uh we'll talk to you again soon mm. Boy. Ta we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connection to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present 
and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today.